You are now watching Zach Lesage PTCG. Let's get it. Yo, what's poppin' peeps? Welcome back to Zach Lesage channel. Today we're gonna be going over our power rankings and I do wanna let you know I am changing up the structure a little bit. So every week I try to find the best way to improve my content. And while I was taking a shower today, I was like, you wanna know what? Let's make this video more short, sweet, concise, while giving the information that we want and how the decks change on a week by week basis. So I don't necessarily feel like I need to describe the strategy of ADPization when it hits one of the top five spots for like the sixth week in the row or seventh week in the row, whatever. That deck is should be like well known. Now, don't view that as a way that you should be shamed if you don't know particularly what that deck's doing or if you want a little bit of a refresh on some of these decks. So what I'm gonna be doing in the comments below, I'm also gonna be putting um, links to my most recent videos for all of the decks in this video. So if you're like, you wanna know what, I wanna know what Excadrill or Control can do, I'll put a link there so you could totally understand what the strategy is because that video is probably gonna better describe it than I can in a couple minutes. So these videos are gonna be a little bit shorter going forward. I'll test the waters a little bit, we'll see. So I don't know if, I don't, nothing's ever forever on this channel. Um, I'm always looking to become the best content creator I possibly can be. But I do wanna let people know, so if you're wondering why this video would go from a 30, 40, 50 minute video to like a 10, 15, 20 minute video, that's why. So the deck list for all the top 10 decks are gonna be in the description below. And if you haven't already, give this video a like. It does help signal boost to everyone. I know I say this like every video, but it really does help bring other Pokemon uh, TCG fanatics to this channel and really spreads the word. And while you're at it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We are so close, like so close to 4,000 subs, and I'd really love to get there um, before chilling rains if possible. All right, you wanna know what? Let's jump into our number 10 spot, see exactly what we got going on. Hopping into our number 10 spot with a new entry, because it previously wasn't on our list and has not been on our list for a while, is Excadrill Pidgeotto Control. Now, this isn't the only control deck we've seen this week. We've seen the Munchlax, Alolan Muck Control, we even see in Sander what check play, uh, send a scorch kind of control. And the reason why we're seeing so much control this week is because we had the best two to three chill TCG invitational, the best two to three Crollo invitational, the best two to three chill TCG GG tour cash events. Um, so, I mean, with all of these events being two out of three, of course, Control is going to see a little bit more success. It's difficult to play in a best of one format at times. Sure, it could sneak in and you're going to have some excellent players being able to play the deck. Sander and Vini are some, some of the players who are really going to be able to play in a best of one format. But for most players, it's they're just not able to play this deck quick enough. That's just because Control is not the most popular archetype or anything. But really coming off of a first place and a first place at both the Chill and the Crollo Invitational, both by Vinny Fernandez, putting this deck on the map. So we might see this being played in a few player cup keys. Again, I don't recommend because that's even shorter than time. You have 12 and a half seconds or 12 and a half minutes in order to make that work. So I'd say that this deck is probably going to not exist on our list next week. And we're probably gonna see Control take a complete dive um, in the next upcoming weeks, just as there's not enough two to three events to support it. Now, if I haven't got a chance to uh, handle Sanders' new Control deck with the send a scorch thing so we'll see exactly if that's able to flourish in best of one but um fingers crossed i do want to see control in our format i know a lot of people don't necessarily like this deck i think it's because they don't necessarily build strategies around it so control is at its best when people are least expecting it i think people right now are expecting it and have learned from some of the top players who are streaming for like the chill tcg event how to play against this deck so my prediction this deck's gonna go down but I mean, learn exactly what's going on. Like I said, there is descriptions for, there's basically like links to all the deck lists below in the description. And there's also video links. So if you're wondering what these decks do for most of the decks, I do have a video on my channel. If there's not a deck um, video there, um, for example, Mewtwo Urshifu, it is going to be on this list. Surprise, surprise. Um, I haven't necessarily had a chance to cover that yet. We will be covering that deck on the channel this week. So let's jump into our number nine spot. Next up is number nine is Grass Mewtwo. So basically this deck saw success this week, there's no doubt about it, but it was really carried by Logan McKay's performance at the Pizza Friday event. 
And I mean, as much as that event sounds like a meme, I'd want to win a pizza too, you know what I'm saying? Like, play a Pokemon TCG event, win a pizza, that sounds like a bomb Friday night if you ask me. Um, all kidding aside, it's one of those things where this deck is a Mewtwo deck, and I think that there's also other players that were experimenting with other builds of this deck. So what's not listed is in the 10 to 15 range, there is quite a few Rillaboom concepts um, with Egg Route that we're seeing success. So I think his players are experimenting between Grass Mewtwo, Rillaboom, Egg Route, which are both very similar decks in terms of like construction. I think it's one of those things where between Mewtwo decks and Rillaboom decks, this deck is just getting a lower share. Um, Otherwise, I think that this deck can probably hover anywhere between the lower half of the top 10. Um, it did drop from number 5. I think anything 5 and five to 10 is probably fair for this deck for the foreseeable future. However, we did, obviously with two new inclusions on this list, um, as far as I'm counting, I'm looking at my sheet, it looks like there's two new inclusions this week. Decks will have to dip in and out of the top 10. This is one of the decks that I could predict dipping out of the top 10. It's fine. Um, but I don't necessarily think too much more of that. I think this deck is fine. I could change my opinion, but right now I think it's just fine. Jumping into our number eight spot is another new inclusion on this list. So Simone Trottier brought this deck to the Chill TCG Cup. And I mean, I've, I've seen some iterations of this deck before. If I'm not mistaken, I think Celio's Network played this like a month ago. Um, didn't see the greatest success back then, and this deck really never took off. I think a lot of players are really just like Rapid Strike Urshifu um, players, or Dragapult Urshifu, where Dragapult Urshifu basically took everyone's attention away from what this deck could have been. Now, this deck was able to come first at the Chill TCG events on Wednesday, and second at the Chill TCG event. I actually lost to the person who came second to end my run in the top four at the Chill TCG event. So I saw this unfold firsthand, and it's one of those things where I think this deck is new in a way, it's exciting in a way, and basically where Mewtwo and Mew GX struggles, or a Galaxy Mewtwo-esque deck, or JIT Mewtwo deck, uh, depending on who you ask, struggles, it's one of those things where this deck adds in the Urshifu for the Pikaram matchup, for the Eternatus matchup, anything that just like you struggle with, Urshifu seems to handle it. Now, if you look at the list, there are going to be some natural inconsistencies. A deck that's playing two research might be a little bit inconsistent. I did want to put Simone's list here because I think it's one of the it's important to really show where this deck is growing. However, I will be posting this deck on my channel with my own personalized list that I will be testing um, very shortly. It's one of those things where I've played enough against this deck, theory modded enough, played enough Galaxy, Jit, Mewtwo, and then figuring out exactly where it's at. So I think this deck, um, going forward, it's probably going to rise or it's going to drop. Only time can tell if this deck's the real deal. Um, it came out on Wednesday. It's also an incredibly expensive deck to build online. Um, obviously you can't buy cards online, but you can use codes. I think Trevnors are going for like 30 to 40 packs. Rapid Strike Urshifu is not a cheap card. I know Mewtwo is on the ladder and all that. Mewtwo is still not that necessarily cheap of a card. I don't know what Gengar Mimikyu's are going for, but it also doesn't scream cheap. So it's one of those things where this deck has a handful of expensive cards that's a barrier to entry. Now for me, obviously I've been collecting all these cards, so it's not that big of a deal personally, but I do just want to let you know that that could be one of the reasons why this deck's not as popular yet. We'll have to see exactly how it goes as we approach this week. I think that this deck's probably going to stay within the top 10, but that's just my opinion. We'll see exactly how it goes. Jumping into our number 7 spot, we got another Mewtwo deck, whether you call this Galaxy Mewtwo, Psychic Mewtwo, or Jit Mewtwo, or Jit 2, it's another Mewtwo deck in general, and it's our third Mewtwo deck of this list, and like I said for Grass Mewtwo, when people are playing Mewtwo decks, they typically can play other Mewtwo decks because they're all built off the same base. I think anyone who's been playing this deck, you could basically cut the Reshazard, the Bioplume, uh, a couple of Research couple psychic energies, add in a rapid strike Urshifu line, and then you could be playing Mewtwo Urshifu, and maybe you want to experiment with that this week. Maybe you'll play that at a couple events. Obviously, that's going to lower the metagame share of a deck. So as this deck becomes either more interesting because it's better than Mewtwo Urshifu, or less interesting because Mewtwo Urshifu is better, or that there's just other Mewtwo decks being played, that's where it's going to hover. I think that this deck can go anywhere from a lower top five 
to a high top 10. So anywhere between the four, five, six, seven category, sure, it's always gonna be decently represented. It's just difficult to play when ADP can just steal games from it. I know there's obviously Latios GX, but there's also Pika Rom up there that can do a lot of cool things. Eternatus, this deck has some very good matchups. It also has some awkward matchups on the top. So that's really what's keeping it at bay. So jumping into our number six spot, we got Luke Metal. Now Luke Metal's fallen. I was actually the top performing Luke Metal player this week with my top four placement at the Chill TCG events. I lost because PTCGO bugged out. I don't like making excuses for losing, but I have that on video. You can see that it just drew past my turn a couple times. Gotta love PTCGO how that works, right? Um, so check out the video if you want. <laughs> it, it, it's super fun to watch. The whole run was very cool until that point. I basically added Wondrous Labyrinth into the deck after I played against uh, Snarfinator the week before where I also made top 4 with Luke Metal, and a lot of it has to just do with Wondrous Lab is more of a flavor stadium than Chaotic Swell. A lot of people are like, yo Zach, Swell's really good against Tempo Zard and other fire type matchups. Fire is less relevant this week than it was the week before because there's more there was more Victini decks, Mewtwo Victini decks. This week, Mewtwo Victini completely fell off. Victini is not even top 10. And Tempo Zard also fell down. We'll see on this list how that happens. Now, this is one of those things where Chaotic Spell is not necessarily going to be as good. The matchups that you're winning against Fire anyways typically don't involve Chaotic Spell or the use of stadiums too, too much. It's really just uh, you getting set up or hitting them with a Marnie or hitting them with a full metal wall or they did not properly play against this deck. Now, I think Luke Metal is just going to be poised to go up. Um, when it goes down, it goes up the next week, so we'll have to see exactly how it goes. I think that this deck is probably going to be within the top five decks next week, anywhere between the, basically a one to five spot. I think I'd be really surprised if this deck went down again, so we'll see exactly how it goes. This is the deck that I've been killing the Players' Cup with, currently at 109 rep with about 16 keys left at the time of this uh, video. So we'll see exactly how it goes, shooting for one of those top NA spots. Jumping in at our number five spot at the halfway mark is Tempo Zard. Now Tempo Zard saw a little bit of a drop from number three all the way down to number five. And it's probably just because Luke Metal, one of its better matchups, went down from number two to number six. Um, so his increased competition comes from decks like Picarom and ADP and Eternatus and stuff like that. This deck, of course, has to drop. Now, you might be like, yo, what's that psychic type uh, Pokemon? We did get the Galarian Rapidash V box recently. So I do like how Galarian Rapidash V can be quite strong in this deck. It's not necessarily a a 100% inclusion. Like any other card in this deck, I've been saying that this is a great deck to take text in and out of it's libra horn attack for two colorless energies can put damage counters so it does go through mew's bench barrier on one of your opponent's pokemon until its remaining hp is 100 i could see this being quite strong against decks such as eternatus or even decks like picarom and it's only two energies so you can always bank an energy after you welder it i'm probably going to cover this deck in the next week or so fingers crossed if i get around to it um, but i think that this deck's probably going to hover within the top five if i had any kind of hunch Going into our number four spot, we're not seeing any movement from Eternatus. I think that Eternatus has been seeing a lot of success. It did very well at both the Chill TCG and Crollo Invitational events. Saw some top performances at some of the smaller events during the weeks where it won a bunch of those. And now it's one of those things where uh, this deck has been just doing okay in general. I think it's because it has decent ADP matchups, decent Picaron matchups, decent Tempo Zard matchups. The double Phoebe inclusion in this list can do well against Luke Metal, Galaxy Mewtwo. I think that this deck can outrush Mewtwo Urshifu. So I'd say if anything, Eternatus to me seems like it's appropriately placed within the top five. If anything, I might see it shoot up a little bit more this week. Um, so that's that's kind of where I'm at with the Eternatus deck. As long as Rapid Strike Urshifu uh, doesn't see too, too much play. And I mean, Rapid Strike Urshifu, since you haven't seen it yet so far, probably made it up a little bit higher on this list. Wink, wink. We'll see exactly how that goes. But this deck, again, is going to be directly tied to the correlation between Rapid Strike Urshifu. Um, so stay tuned to see exactly how that goes. Jumping into our number three spot, we got Rapid Strike Urshifu. Now this deck used to be at the top and it was at the top for weeks while players were experimenting with it and it dropped and now it's climbing its way back up. Why is it climbing its way back up? Well, you wanna know what? I'm actually thinking it's because it 
probably has a decent ADP matchup. Does well with Pika, against Picarom, does well against Eternatus, and can do well against Tempo Zard. That means since this deck's not at the top, Psychic decks are not necessarily countering it as much, and that means that this deck can survive a little bit more. Now, this deck still has obvious struggles in the format. I'd ra much rather not fight a Mewtwo deck, or a Galaxy Mewtwo deck, or a Luke Metal deck, um, or even Mirror. I think Mirror is a tough matchup with this deck. It's one of those things we'll see exactly how it goes as the metagame progresses. I think that this deck can hover anywhere between the lower of the top five, so the three, four, five, six, and the six, seven, eight spots. So I think that's probably its range. We'll have to see exactly how other decks like Eternatus and Pika Rom and Tempo Zard continuously perform. You know why I said it's the best two to three week? Yep, that's why we probably got Pika Rom at number two. So it was previously number eight, so this deck performs better in best two to three because it can kind of create compelling game plans, especially when you're playing against newer decks. Um, so this deck has options against control. This deck has options against other top decks and formats such as ADP. This deck can come up with a compelling game plan, game two or game three. So if you lose game one because you just got absolutely bamboozled or unlucky, Pika Rom, which typically I'd say is, I thought it was more consistent than it was in best of one, proves to be more successful in best two out of three. And that's probably why we see this deck. It won the Players' Cup two with me piloting it. It came second at the Players' Cup three, and it continuously does well in these best two to three events. So similar to Tempos are doing well in best two to three events and Control doing well in best two to three events, I think that this deck is very good in best two to three events. Nothing really much to change here between my lists. I did cut the Fan of Waves for a Team Yelgrunt, and that's basically just because uh, E-Turn is seeing a little bit more success, and I think it could be better against the overall metagame. If Mewtwo Urshifu and Galaxy Mewtwo continuously do well, maybe you want to play a Team Yelgrunt and a Fan of Waves. I, I'd say, if anything, I'd cut a Stealthy Hood if I'm doing that. So I think that this deck's probably going to dip down a little bit, um, probably staying within our top five, higher top ten, so anywhere between four, five, six, seven, if you had to ask me. Boom! We made it to our number one spot, and we got ADP Zacian again. So why is this deck seeing success? Well, the rest of the decks aren't necessarily countering it as well. This deck is the king of winning smaller events, getting those top placements here or there, because there's always that one ADP player. So it's not necessarily that there's only like one or two players playing this deck, such as the case of Mewtwo Urshifu, or that there's a dedicated group of players playing Galaxy Mewtwo or Jitsu. It's one of those things where a lot of people will just be like, oh, I'll play ADP for this event, and then one of them will spike it. Um, so when you don't necessarily have some of the top players playing this deck, I don't necessarily think that Andrew Hedrick played that much this week, that's really where you're not necessarily getting those consistent spikes, you're just getting one of players playing this deck, making top four, winning the small events, etc, etc. I did add back Crushing Hammers into this deck this week because I think it's quite strong against other decks in the top 10. So with Rapid Strike Urshifu, Eternatus against Luke Metal, against all these other things, the Crushing Hammers can be enough to edge you out into those games. So I think that they're probably going to be very good. Now, depending on how the rest of the metagame changes, you might want to add in a second Rusted Sword if Luke Metal is going to be going up, or Tool Scrapper, or a few other things. So that's what we got going on for our number one spot this week. I mean, it's ADP. I'm sorry that it's ADP peeps, but start countering ADP. ADP is going to go down. I'd say ADP is going to definitely be within our top three, regardless of anything that goes on in our metagame. So always a safe choice if you have nothing else to choose. And that's what we got going on for this video today, peeps. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video, learning more about why the meta is changing at the rate that it is, or what decks are on top this week. Hopefully it helps you when you're playing in some tournaments, getting your player's cup keys done, or just casually playing the game on the ladder. That being said, I got, a, I got a lot of editing to do, so give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, remember to check those deck lists in the description below, um, and then we'll catch up with y'all later. Have yourself a great one, peace out. I want to give a huge shout out to everyone who's become a channel member so far. Some peeps wa love watching my videos, and I totally appreciate that, but some peeps have gone more than out of their way beyond just watching my videos and have supported me financially. So shout out to everyone who's been featured on this channel, who's going through this list of names. We actually have so many channel members that I can't fit them in a single slide, so I figured this might be the best way to get everyone appreciated and kind of showcase all of the top supporters of the Zach Lesage PGCG YouTube channel. Seriously, it means the bottom, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I, it's honestly, I'm almost at a loss for words but 
I, I'm so happy that you are all appreciating and loving the content and that it's hitting home. And I mean, I'm all, I'm up all in my feels. So I hope that you uh, <laughs> understand. And thank you so much, everyone. If you want to become a channel member, totally consider it. Um, I'll make it worth your while. Um, and I, I totally mean that. I'll do everything I possibly can for my channel members to make it sure that it's worth their while. So thank you so much, everyone. And it, it, it's just amazing. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. If you haven't already, it'd mean the world to me if you could subscribe to help support me as a content creator. Thanks again and have yourself a great one.